for them. What do you think the likelihood of that is? Well, um, the, the way in which that I, uh, the Islamic State has been sort of functioning is uh, what we can describe as a uh, promoting a leader, leaderless jihad. That meaning that all they have to really do is put the message out there for individuals to become radicalized and they act on their own or uh, reach out to at least one person to direct them. Um, I mean, ISIS will claim responsibility for an accident in the kitchen if they could. <laughs> yes. um, but, um, I mean, it, it, it's, it's really uh, uh, irrelevant, actually, if they've actually instructed uh, or inspired. The, the, the challenge that we have is evident that the, the message that ISIS is putting out seems to be reaching far and wide. Yeah. And I mean, Al Qaeda used to actually, you know, people would, there would be evidence that people had gone to training camps in, in, in various Middle Eastern countries. They'd be trained and then they'd be sent back to, to as they did, 9 11 and other major terror attacks. Whereas the, the, the method of the Islamic State, there are people who've gone to Syria and Iraq and are now being sent home as, and, and, and back across Europe as much as they can. But, but it does seem that they are using the 21st century methods of recruitment, which is, you know, the internet. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and ISIS were the first terrorist organization to have kind of an industrial approach to the Internet. They're extremely they're savvy. They know exactly how to use, as you say, the 21st century techniques. Um, our research since the inception of ISIS uh, has shown that they were producing on average a thousand pieces of new content every single month, um, promoting the Islamic State uh, promoting the idea that if one wanted to live a pure uh, Islamic lifestyle, that they should emigrate there, or if they could not, then they should act uh, and commit some act of violence uh, in the countries that they were situated, uh, uh, mainly in the West. Yeah, yeah, in, indeed, and 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 that seems to have been the the, the method that has been used in in some of the other cases. Of course, others still coming to court. Uh, these wake of terror attacks that we've had uh, across this country uh, in uh, in recent uh, in recent months. Um, in terms of sort of the the level of <laughs> the level of competence, we were just discussing this with Will Geddes, a security expert. Uh, a lot of people are, and a lot of the media are making this uh, link to the the film The Four Lions, where uh, mm-hmm. a group of four friends were just I mean just utterly stupid and incompetent, didn't know. What they were doing, don't have a clue, and ended up, you know, killing one of their own uh, during their their first attempts at, uh, you know, practicing and making these bombs. Um, how? Look, if I went and searched online how to make a bomb, I would in itself that the simple search would be a criminal offence, wouldn't it? Um, how, is is it that it's actually incredibly hard to make these sort of bombs, or is it that actually the fact that we don't have these sort of bombs on our streets day in day out, given that we're told twenty three thousand people are possibly plotting against us in this country, that 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 actually they are incredibly hard to do, and you need to have had proper training to to uh, make a bomb that can actually kill. When I when I heard the news that the IED had it was uh, more of a flame uh, than an explosion, I, I I I suspected it was a very young person that had perhaps you know Googled and and found the information online. And one thing we need to sort of understand is that you know how to make a bomb uh, and the instructions on how to make a bomb in your home have been for years ever since the internet's been around. To be honest. Um, the, the the challenge for us is that uh, we we can't completely monitor what happens online and who yeah. searches what um, because these kind of low grade attacks they have minimal resources and they have uh, a very low say terrorist footprint so it's very difficult for the intelligence services to know who's going to act and and where to find them so the 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 the, the challenge that we have is to stop these individuals being attracted to these um, acts of terrorism. We, we can never stop the... Unfortunately, this, this may sort of upset your uh, listeners, but we have to accept the reality that more attacks will happen of this nature. And it's the... Well, they will, because we're, we're not doing anything... <laughs> I mean, let me, look, some of us would argue that, look, is this now part and parcel of daily life in big cities in Europe? Yes, it is, because of a failure of the authorities. To act. I mean, look, some people <laughs> may well be thinking... 
you know, here's the thing. We, we've got a bunch of, uh, regardless of who is responsible for this particular attack, OK, but, you know, we, we, we have, we, we have, uh, we, we know for a fact we, we have a number of people who are, who are, are who are, are, are very supportive of the jihadi uh, ideas yeah. and, and want, and want to, and want to kill us and destroy our, our way of life. And they're living in this country right now. Uh, we've had a numerous cases where the, the, the person responsible for the bomb, in fact, the vast majority in Britain have been born and bred in this country. Yeah. And yet we are we are still have pretty much open doors in lots of ways to more people coming into this country who 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 aren't who you know who who aren't by definition going to be as integrated as people who've been born and raised in this country, gone to school here, and and, and these you know these cases are people who've actually lived with, you know, with 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 British born and bred families. Uh, there are an awful lot of people, and I have to say I am one of them that would question in the wake of whoever is responsible for these bombs that you know whether whether we we should actually accept that this is part and parcel of daily life and something we should expect because we're simply not dealing with the underlying issue. Yeah, I, I think um, that is the stark reality that we have to accept this as part and parcel of daily life. Um, the, but the challenge but is it doesn't have, have to be. It doesn't have to be. Well, it, it's about damage limitation. Um, for in the short term, it's about damage limitation and you know supporting the intelligence services. And I think they're under-resourced. I mean, to... As you said, we know of individuals that are currently in the UK. It's, it's said that there are about 20,000 that are supporters of uh, jihadists or jihadist sympathisers. To, to actually monitor someone 24-7, uh, it requires 24 people, 24 people to monitor one person 24-7. And we simply don't have the resources to do that. But there, but, but there are other options than monitoring, aren't there? Look, I mean, there, look, there is a trade-off in terms of freedom uh, and security, and we make that trade-off all the time uh, uh, in, in our in our lives in terms of what we consider to be proof and not proof. And but the reality is that we are we are trading off the freedom of people who we suspect to be plant, plotting against us, uh, people against these against the security, and the safety of our you know ordinary people to go to a pop concert, to get on the tube, to go to work, uh, to go out to a bar in London Bridge on on a Friday night. I mean, there is a trade-off, but it seems to me that we are worrying far too much about the freedoms of people who we suspect are plotting against us, as opposed to the freedom to not be blown to smithereens if you're just walking about this country, whether you, by the way, are Muslim, Christian, atheist, white, black or Asian. Securitization, which I think you're alluding to, um, I, I don't think that's the key. Obviously, we have to put in place as, as many checks and balances. But the, what we have to understand is terrorism is, is extremely adaptive. And we are seeing the sort of evolution of extremism from this kind of structured, organized uh, form into this kind of ad hoc uh, with self-starters using uh, vehicles and in, uh, household instruments. The, the key is what I want to uh, understand is, you know, what makes an individual decide to do that? You know, what makes an individual? It said that this individual is a, a refugee. Uh, but what, why would he turn against a country that has opened its, its doors and, and given them a place of sanctuary? Why would the, an individual like this decide to take on upon himself to, to commit an act of terrorism? We need to get to the uh, these vulnerable people that are exploited. Um, before the likes of ISIS and Islamic State, because if we can get to them first, then we can stop them carrying well, you, out Well, that's attacks. all very well with someone who's not already. And again, we don't know. We don't know whether this man, these men are responsible, and we don't know what the, the motivation was behind it officially yet anyway, even if yeah. he was, he is charged with a crime. But uh, see, but the reality is, you know, we haven't, we're told there are 23,000 people who are on the watch list. We haven't got to those 23,000 first, but we just expect to carry on going about our daily lives in the knowledge there are 23,000 people known to the authorities who probably would like us all to be blown to smithereens. I have to say, I'm, I don't think that should be part and parcel of living in a modern city in 21st century Britain. I, I think the, the, um, the, the more sort of nervous position is that the people that we are, are not on the radar in actual fact are committing acts of terrorism. I, I don't think yeah. that these two individuals right. were on the radar. <laughs> uh, yeah, which yeah, makes it more precarious situation. Sure. Uh, um, the, the, the situation that we have, it's, I mean, I, I always use the term, you know, Pandora's box has been opened. Mm. And this is the aftermath. What we're seeing now is the aftermath of about 20 years of these uh, pernicious ideas about the religion of Islam being banded around and running amok. And we're seeing that young people seem to uh, be attracted to these ideas and feel, feel that it's a, 
a form of salvation. And I, for me, it's imperative that we really attack the root of the problem and, and, okay. and t attack those ideas.